Now let's talk about some of the Cricut's most exciting features. Each Cricut cartridge has its own set of creative feature keys. Customers can refer to the handbook of any particular cartridge for detailed instructions about the cartridge's creative features. The creative feature keys are on the left side of the keypad overlay. When a feature is selected, the key will be backlit in green. To turn off a feature key, press the feature key a second time. Or press the reset key or press a different feature key. Only one creative feature key can be selected for each cut. All font and shape cartridges contain the shadow feature, which creates a chunky version of the original font or shape. If I press the shadow key and enter the word cat, then I press cut. I can then press unload paper and remove the cuts from the cutting mat. Here we have cuts of the base image, and here we have cuts in the shadow feature. The shadow blackout feature is a solid version of the shadow feature. I put my paper back on the cutting mat, press load last, press the shadow blackout key, type the word cat, press cut, and then press the unload paper key when the Cricut machine is finished cutting. It's easy to see the differences between these cuts. This is only a tiny preview of what the Cricut machine can do. Now let's talk about some of the other advanced operations. The blade navigation buttons are arranged around the cut button. They allow you to move the blade up, down, left, or right to any desired place on your paper. Use the set paper size key when you are using paper that is smaller than 6 by 12. You will simply align the corner of the paper in the lower left corner of the cutting mat. Press load paper. Use the blade navigation buttons to align the blade with the upper right corner of the paper and then press the set paper size key. This will tell the Cricut machine where to begin cutting. You can then enter your project information. The paper saver key rearranges the letters you have selected to take up the least amount of space possible on your paper. This option stays activated unless you press it again or press reset all. If real dial size is selected, all letters, shapes, or phrases will be cut out according to the literal dial size rather than being cut out in proportion to the key height character. The Cricut machine can cut a wide variety of paper. For an optimal cut on lightweight paper such as vellum or heavy paper such as thick cardstock, you will need to adjust the blade depth. Locate the adjustment knob on the top of the cutting blade assembly and turn it to your desired setting from 1 to 6. The smaller the number, the shorter the blade depth. Shorter blade depths are recommended for lightweight papers and longer blade depths are recommended for heavyweight papers. Turning the adjustment knob to 1 pulls the blade up to keep it from tearing vellum or similar papers. Turning it all the way to 6 lengthens the blade and allows it to cut through thick paper like heavy cardstock. It might be a good idea to test the setting on a scrap piece of paper and make more adjustments if necessary. The speed dial also helps the Cricut machine adjust for optimal cuts on a wide range of papers. If you're cutting lightweight papers like vellum or if your cuts involve a lot of detail, you will want a slower cutting speed. The pressure dial is the third adjustment you can make to the Cricut machine to customize its cutting abilities. The pressure dial allows you to control how hard the cutting mechanism presses against the paper. For lighter papers, turn the dial down or counterclockwise to decrease the cutting pressure. For heavier papers, move the dial up or clockwise to increase the cutting pressure. The pressure dial, in addition to the blade depth and the speed dial adjustments, will prevent lightweight papers from tearing and ensure that thick papers are cut all the way through. Now for some basic information about maintenance. The cutting blade is very durable, but its actual life will vary depending on the types of papers and settings used. It will last for at least 125 to 150 single cuts. When it's time to replace the cutting blade, we recommend that you only use genuine Cricut replacement cutting blades, which are available for purchase. To replace the cutting blade, you first need to remove the cutting blade assembly. To remove the cutting blade assembly, locate the thumb screw and turn it counterclockwise until it loosens enough that you can swing it into the right. 
Be careful not to loosen the screw too much or it will fall out. Remove the cutting blade assembly from the machine. To remove the blade, press down on the blade release. The blade will emerge from the bottom of the assembly where it's held in place by a magnet. Carefully remove the blade by gently pulling it out of the assembly. To install a new blade, let go of the blade release and carefully insert the shaft of the new blade into the hole in the bottom of the cutting blade assembly. The blade will be pulled up into the assembly if properly installed. Replace the cutting blade assembly. The blades are very sharp and should be handled with the utmost care. You can expect anywhere from 25 to 40 full mat cuts from your Cricut cutting mat before it requires replacement. The actual life of the mat will vary depending on the settings and papers they use. Customers should only use genuine Cricut replacement cutting mats, which are also available for purchase. The cutting mat is designed so that it can be inserted into the Cricut machine with the arrow pointing toward the Cricut machine or with the arrow pointing away from the machine. When the mat is inserted with the arrow pointing away from the machine, it's important to remember that the paper still needs to be aligned in the lower left-hand corner of the mat, and the blade still needs to be aligned in the upper right-hand corner of the mat. Changing the direction of the mat every once in a while will prolong its life. The measurement marks are designed to be used easily when the mat is facing either direction. Another option is to purchase several mats, rotating them often. This will extend the overall life of each mat. Some additional tips for caring for the Cricut machine include keeping it away from food and liquids, keeping it in a dry, dust-free location, not leaving it in a car where excessive heat or cold might damage plastic parts, and not exposing it to direct sunlight for an extended period of time. The Cricut machine can be cleaned with a slightly damp cloth. Any excess moisture should be immediately dried with a soft cloth. No part of the machine should ever be immersed in water. Customers should not use chemicals or alcohol-based cleaners on the Cricut machine. Abrasive cleaning tools should also be avoided. For more detailed instructions and helpful tips, please refer to the Cricut machine's user manual. We're sure you're going to enjoy using the Cricut machine. We also hope that you enjoy teaching others about the Cricut's versatility. Mm -hmm.